This is section 4.3, multiplying and dividing fractions. When we multiply fractions, we can think of taking a portion of a fraction. For example, if we're trying to find one half of six eighths, one half of six eighths would be three eighths. Because if we look at six eighths graphed on the number line, If we want half of that value, then we would go half the distance from zero to there. So instead of counting over six of our eight equal portions, we'd only count over three. When we have a sentence written out like this, we can translate some of these words into operations. The word of means multiplication, and the word is means equal to. What this means if we're taking one half of six eighths is that we're actually multiplying one half times six eighths. And since the answer we get is three eighths, then this equals three eighths. When we multiply two fractions, really all we have to do is multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. If we have a over b times c over d, then all we're going to do is multiply a times c and multiply b times d. So we make this one big fraction, put our two numerators on the top and multiply, put our two denominators on the bo bottom and multiply those two together. Here are a couple of examples. If we're multiplying 1 sixth times 5 ninths, then all we're going to do is take our two numerators, the 1 and the 5, and multiply those together. And on the bottom, we're going to take our two denominators and multiply those two together. So this gives us one fraction. On the top we end up with 5 and on the bottom we end up with 54. The same way for this one, 5 sevenths times 2 thirds is going to give us 5 times 2 on the top and 7 times 3 on the bottom. Then if we multiply our values we get 10 on the top and 21 on the bottom. Now a hint to make this much easier for yourself is that before you actually do the multiplication, if you can find any common factors between numerators and denominators, divide those out before you start to multiply. So if we have 5 sixths times 3 twentieths, let's write these out with our prime factorizations. Let's see, in the prime factorization for 20, we would have 4 times 5, so that gives us 2 times 2 times 5. And with this multiplication symbol in between, you can cancel from one fraction to the other. It's probably better to think about this, though, as one big fraction, just so that it, you don't get it confused later on with what we do with adding and subtracting fractions. So now we have all of our factors from both numerators on the top and all of our factors from both denominators written on the bottom, and we can cancel anything that they have in common. So we have a 3 in common between those and a 5 in common. This is one of those cases where we don't have any factors left on the top, so you have to remember that there's still a 1 there. On the bottom we have 2 times 2 times 2, so this gives us 1 8. That's our product for our original two fractions, and it's already in simplest form because we already canceled out all the common factors. Here's some multiplication problems for us to do. So let's just write out what our multiplication here would look like. We have 2 times 1 on the top and 3 times 4 on the bottom. Now again, before we start doing any actual multiplication, let's write anything we can with its prime factorization. So the 4 we're going to write as 2 times 2. 
Now we can see that we have a 2 in common between the top and the bottom. So we're going to cancel those out. We do have our 1 left on the top. So we have 1 over 3 times 2. We don't have any more factors in common, so we can write that as 1 sixth, and it's in simplest form. Let's do the same thing for this one. So we can start out by writing the numerators together and the denominators together. Then we can do our prime factorizations. Prime factorization for 18. Since it's even, we can write it as 2 times 9. So we end up with 2 times 3 times 3 for our prime factorization of 18. And then 15, the prime factorization for that is 3 times 5. Now we can look for factors to cancel out. So we can cancel out a 2 from each of these. We can cancel out a 3. And we can cancel out a 5. So what we have left on the top is a 3. And since we canceled out everything on the bottom, technically we have a 1 left down there. Since it's on the, in the denominator of the fraction, though, when we have a 1 in the denominator, we can just write this as the whole number 3. Now, we're doing the same thing even if we have negative values. And again, this is just, this works the same way with fractions that it did with integers. If we, for example, if we had two negative signs here, then we would end up with a positive answer. Since we only have one negative, then our answer in the end is going to be negative. So we can just write that negative sign out there. And on the top of this, we're going to have 7 times 2. On the bottom, we have 8 times 7. If we find our prime factorization of 8, That's going to give us 2 times 2 times 2. So don't forget to keep this negative going along in front of the fraction. So our factors in common are the 7 and a 2. Again, we don't have anything left on the top. So we have to put a 1 there. We can't just leave the top blank. It doesn't work that way. And on the bottom, we have 2 times 2. So this is going to end up being 1 fourth. Oops, this is going to end up being negative 1 fourth. For this last problem, we have three different fractions that we're multiplying together. We still do this the same way. and before we even get started with that, notice that we have two negative numbers that are multiplied together. Since we have an even number of negative signs, that means that our answer is going to be positive. So we don't even have to worry about that the negative signs are just going to go away. So now with our three fractions, we can still do the same thing. We just take all of our numerators and write all of them together on top of the fraction bar. Same thing, we take all of our three denominators and write them together on the bottom of the fraction bar. Now we want to do prime factorizations We've done the prime factorization of 12 a couple of times already, and that is 2 times 2 times 3. On the bottom, we have 9 is 3 times 3. 10 is 2 times 5. And 14 is 2 times 7. So this was from the 9. This was from the 10 and this was from the 14. So now we're looking for common factors. We can cancel 
those two threes, we can cancel those twos, we can cancel those twos, and we have another three that we can cancel. So all we have left on the top is two, and on the bottom we have five times seven. We're going to end up with two over 35. Now what if we have a fraction with an exponent? What if our exponential expression has a base that's a fraction? Well, this works the same way as it did with integers. For example, 1 8 squared means that we have two factors of 1 8. That means we're multiplying 1 8 times itself. So we could write it out this way. And then we just work our multiplication like we did before. So we have 1 over, oops, 1 times 1 over 8 times 8. For this one, we don't really need to write out the prime factorization of 8 because we're, we already know we're not going to have any factors in common with the top since the only thing we have on the top is 1. So for this one, we could skip that step and go ahead and multiply the 8's together and we would get 1 64th. Let's look at this one. In this one, the negative is inside the parentheses, so that means that we're multiplying negative 2 fifths times negative 2 fifths times negative 2 fifths. So we have three factors of negative 2 fifths. Oops, all right. Now we have three negative signs. Since that's an odd number, that means our answer will be negative. So we can put the negative out in front of this and then forget about the rest of those negative signs. And now we're just multiplying 2 fifths times itself three times. So for our numerator, we're going to write all those 2's together on the top. For our denominator, we're going to write all three 5's on the bottom. 2 and 5 are already prime, so there aren't any factors in common between these. So now we can just multiply. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And 5 times 5 times 5 gives us 125. Our answer in lowest terms is 8 over 125. Another term that we're going to use quite a bit is the reciprocal of a fraction, or the reciprocal of a number. And two numbers are reciprocals of each other if their product is 1, if you can multiply them together and get 1. So the reciprocal of the fraction a over b is b over a. Notice how the a and the b are just switched. And that's because if we multiply those two fractions together, a over b times b over a, we get on the top a times b, on the bottom b times a. Everything would cancel here on both the top and the bottom, so all we'd have left in both places would be 1, and that just gives us 1. Where we're really going to use this is in dividing fractions. If we have a over b divided by c over d, that's the same thing as a over b times the reciprocal of c over d. In other words, all we're doing is taking the second fraction in our division and flipping it over. So we're going from c over d to d over c, and that turns it into a multiplication. The first step if you're dividing fractions is to rewrite the problem as a multiplication. If you see this division symbol, then that means you're going to take the second fraction and flip it over. And that changes this to a multiplication. So this, instead of 1 8 divided by 5 ninths, now we would have 1 8 times 
nine fifths. From then on, it works just the same as the other multiplication problems we've been doing. We would find our prime factorizations. And notice here that if we have a one as one of our factors, we don't have to write it unless we have a reason to. So we can just write our prime factorization of nine there. Our prime factorization of eight we've done in a couple of other places. It's two times two times two. Now if we look at our numerator and denominator, there's nothing in common. So there's nothing that we can cancel out. That means that we're just going to go back through and multiply the numbers together on in the numerator and in the denominator. That gives us an answer of 9 fortieths. For this one again, our first step is going to be just to rewrite it. So we change this to multiplication and we flip over this fraction. So this turns this into 5 6 times 3 halves. That gives us 5 times 3 over 6 times 2. And we need to factor the 6. Everything else here is prime. But the prime factorization of 6 is 2 times 3. And now we can cancel a 3. That gives us 5 over 2 times 2, or 5 fourths. One very important thing to think about when you're dividing fractions is that you can't look for common factors to divide out until you've rewritten the problem as a multiplication. That's why I said that your first step is to rewrite the problem as a multiplication and flip over your fraction. If you tried to do this problem by dividing out these twos first, you would get the wrong answer. So just remember that the first step is to rewrite the problem as a multiplication. Let's do some examples. First step again is to rewrite as a multiplication. So we change this to multiplication and we flip our fraction over. Then we're going to write our numerators together on the top, our denominators together on the bottom. And if we write our prime factorization of 4 is 2 times 2. Again, this 1 here, we can just drop. And now we don't have any factors in common, so we can just go through and multiply this back out. 2 times 2 is 2, two times 2 times 2 is 8, and we have 3 on the bottom. For this one, again, we're changing this to multiplication. So we have 1 times 6 over 6 times 1. Now here's a place that you wouldn't necessarily have to write out the prime factorization if you notice that you already have a factor in common of 6. So you could just go ahead and cross that out already. And all that leaves us with on the top and the bottom are 1. And since 1 divided by 1 is 1, then our answer for this is just 1. For this one, we have one negative sign, so that means our answer will be negative. And we're changing this to multiplication and flipping our fraction over so that we have negative 8 elevenths times 15 twelfths. And remember to carry the negative along as you go through. It's easy to forget that it's there. Now we're writing our prime factorization of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. Our prime factorization of 5 is 3 times 5. In the denominator, 11 is prime. And we've done the prime factorization for 12 before. It's 2 times 2 times 3. Now we're looking for things to cancel. So we can cancel the 2's there, we can cancel those 2's, and we can cancel the 3's. 
So on the top of this, we have 2 times 5. On the bottom, all we have is left is 11. That's going to give us negative 10 elevenths for our final answer. One last one. Change this to multiplication. And since this negative went with our 7 there, let's leave it there for the moment. You might not notice that there was a negative until you got to this piece. But now let's think about this since we have our problem rewritten. Since there's only one negative in this whole multiplication problem, let's just put that out in the front because we know our answer will be negative. So then our numerator is 4 times 7 and our denominator is 7 times 27. Prime factorization of 4 is 2 times 2. And we haven't done a prime factorization of 27 yet. So let's do that over here. 27 is 3 times 9. 3 is prime, but 9 we can still split into 3 times 3. So our prime factorization for 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So we have a factor in common of 7. We still have our negative out in front. On the top we have 2 times 2. On the bottom we have 3 times 3 times 3. So now we have our negative out in front, 4 on the top, and 27 on the bottom. So our final answer is negative 4 27ths. We can also multiply and divide with fractional replacement values. Let's look, at an, let's look at an example where we're dividing x by y. So we have the expression x divided by y. We're replacing both x and y with fractions. So we're replacing x with 5 sixths and y with 2 fifths. This works the same way. So if we wrote our parentheses in here, we would be replacing the x with the five half, the x with the five sixths, and the y with the two fifths. Then we're changing this into a multiplication problem, so we flip over our second fraction, the two fifths, and this is going to give us five times five on the top, and six times two on the bottom, and we end up with twenty-five twelfths. Let's do one more example with these replacement values. So let's also evaluate the product xy. So if we're using our parentheses, we're going to replace the x with 5 sixths and the y with 2 fifths. That just gives us a multiplication problem. We have 5 times 2 on the top and 6 times 5 on the bottom. Since 6 isn't prime, let's rewrite it with its prime factorization of 2 times 3. And we can cancel our 5's and our 2's. Notice that we've canceled everything on the top, so we still have a 1 there and we have a 3 left on the bottom. This would give us one third.